Welcome everyone to another episode of Dynamics Corner, the podcast where we dive deep into all things Microsoft Dynamics. Whether you're a seasoned expert or just starting your journey into the world of Dynamics 365, this is your place to gain insights, learn new tricks, new tools like taking payments and improving cash flow, or even changing behaviors. I'm your co-host, Chris. And this is Brad. This episode is recorded on November 16th, 2023. Chris, Chris, Chris. Do you buy things? All the time, every day. How, how do you pay for them? Checks. Do you use <laughs> checks? <laughs> no, it's a, I, one time this whole year, I got to choose, I got to write check because the guy that was fixing my wood pellet wouldn't take cash or digital payments. It had to be check. I would rather take cash over a check. <laughs> I, I, I because... was confused, but I don't even care cash. That's the pro- that's another thing. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I, I don't understand the payment processing system and the options available. And we could go down that road for a long time. But today we have the opportunity to speak with David Gerstin of Paystand to learn about Paystand and how it's changing human behavior for payments. Howdy, howdy. Good morning, know, David. good afternoon, good evening. I'm not certain which to say. Absolutely. Uh, but, for me, it's morning. Uh, it's uh, still uh, still first cup of coffee. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I think some people have coffee any time of the day. I know. Oh, the, throughout the day. You have to. I just have my coffee first thing in the morning. Yeah. I, I try to stretch my K-cups out. I'm cheap, so, you know, I, I keep going back to my Keurig and... It gets lighter and lighter and lighter. <laughs> oh, I grind my own coffee. Same. I have a coffee grinder. I went through this whole coffee phase that coffee to me is more of a experience. So I, I grind my coffee. I had a French press. I have a pour over with the paper filters. So depending so I on what I think I want to do that, honestly, Brad, but I, it, I'm, I'm one of those like, I, I, struggle to commit, you know, because I it's just so easy to fall back to the Keurig. So I did see a new one that's um it's uh Cuisinart makes it. I saw it on commercial a couple days ago and literally it's it has drip and it has pod. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, maybe I could you know, maybe maybe some days because my wife actually she does um she does the K cup but she makes her own. So she does grind. I was and going then, to ask you if you filled your own K-Cups. I do yes, know several that they like the K-Cups, but right. to save and to get the variety, they make get their your own. own beans, yeah. I, yeah. I think there is an advantage to having the K-Cups because you get different flavors. Now, when I grind my coffee, I also put it in airtight containers afterwards because I want to keep that freshness. So I grind it, and I'll immediately dump it into the airtight container, and then I'll either use a drip pour over or i do have one of those you know things yeah, the percolator I, I, type ones but i rarely use that i, I use espresso machine and you get the I, I just bought a new one from farberware inexpensive i think it's like 60 bucks um at, at walmart and uh every morning i just uh run through grind my beans and make two shots of espresso and that's it Pretty straightforward. Uh, cool. But what do you do with your beans? Do you just leave them in the machine? See, I'm all about uh, no. trying to keep them fresh. I, do beans I, go stale? I freeze my beans uh, when not in use. So I keep so that keeps the oil uh, from the beans. So whenever I need it, I, that's when I grind it. So it, it tastes a little bit more fresh. Of course, they're so grinding every day, day. And then... Yeah, every day. I grind every day. That, that's too that. much work for me. It is a little work for sure. I mean, well, how Brad, much are you you've grinding? seen me. You've seen me do, do it in camera. <laughs> no, I, I've seen you, but how much are you grinding at a time? Uh, in, enough. It usually is very, fairly quick. Enough. <laughs> enough, for, <laughs> enough for three shots. Sometimes throughout the day, I'd, I'd probably have a, a total of four shots. So two yeah. in the morning and then two like right after lunch, like the second half of the day. <laughs> to the conclusion that the coffee for me is more 
of an experience and a habit versus just getting the quick pick for the caffeine. Uh, you yeah. know, how can you measure that? I mean, I can go without it or not. I change. actually don't even know if I get a reaction to the caffeine because there are days where I have to start my morning so early. You know, I have my routine. I get up. I take my supplements. I take the dog out on the walk, and I'm like, oh shoot, there's a call. I got to get on. And I I walk into my home office, and I don't even have a cup of coffee. And I'm like, oh, and I'm running my day fine. So I, for me, it's like I just want the flavor, the warmth, you know, the sweetness. For me, it's more about that. It's not. I don't think I. It affects you from the caffeine. Um, but I will tell you, if I take a sip of Coca Cola, you know, a little shot, of, you know, that that <laughs> caffeine just that completely. I, I, I'm now for 15 days with no soda in my body. Oh, and that's I, good. And that's actually, great. I, I'm actually having more of a withdrawal from that. Than and coffee. I feel a week without coffee. That's so. the sugar. Chris Chris got on me one time because of the Coca Cola. I had gone years, many years, without having Coca Cola or any soda, maybe ten years or, or more. And then I started having it. And within the first couple of days of having it, Chris called me out and started sending me images of how much sugar <laughs> were in a bottle of Coca Cola and it immediately turned me mm -hmm. off of it. So it's yeah. probably the sugar that yeah. you're into. But yeah. we, we started off talking about the coffee, which is great. And uh, I'm all done with my coffee for the day. I wish I had one now that we were talking about it. But I wanted to, uh, you know, jump into what we wanted to talk about. David, thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. Uh, we've been looking forward to speaking with you. Uh, and for, you know, from the time when we first started talking about having you come on uh, about the topics that you uh, were going to present not present. See, I'm in this like presentation uh, type <laughs> mode. I have to, to get out of that. I'm not certain. There's too many presentations going on for me no, these I'm, days. I'm excited and honored. I, I love listening to your your podcasts and uh, you got some great, I, I, the audience, the, the um, participants, I, I'm amongst some, uh, some great people. So uh, thank you for for including me in this experience. No, well, thank, thank you, you for doing it. And we have some great members of the community and we're very fortunate and happy and humbled that everyone that we have come on, it, it comes on willingly and uh, just speaks freely to share. We have some great episodes planned uh, already uh, coming up uh, for the end of the year and also into the new year. So we're looking forward to it. We're going on to another another year, Chris, of this. So It'd be our third uh, season? It, Yes. Okay. Oh, wow. Yes. Yes. The time flies when you're having fun. Yes. Yes. It's exciting. <laughs> and how, so many, how many episodes do you guys have already? Oh, I think we're at 72, 73. I have yeah. to check, uh, but. Uh, so, well, I know we have the seasons. So it's, I think yeah, we just put up yeah. 41 for season two. I forget what we had for the first season. Uh, it becomes a blur, but we want, we would like to also get back to, we started off doing like the quick tips. And Chris and I had spoken about getting in and doing some quick tips for Business Central in between the guests. I mean, the guests I enjoy speaking with everybody in the community, but also getting some quick tips on how to's uh, for just the various aspects of yeah. Business Central with so, either what's new or just the base functionality that's been there since yeah, yeah. the days of the dinosaur. It's good to, to cover. So 74 seasons, David. So you're the se episodes. you'll be the 75th episode, my friend. Well, well look at that. We're three that's quarters a of 100. <laughs> <laughs> we will have to do something big for the 100th episode, Chris. You will. I know, right? 100 you episodes. Have you have to ah. choose that, that participant very wise. Or, or should it, you, sorry, it, you know, it should be just you two talking. You guys should have your own 100th episode. <laughs> I talk to Chris so often that I don't think it would be an interesting episode <laughs> to be honest with you we we, we need the added guests the guests it was to, a fun fact though david uh, early on our episodes uh it was just brad and myself and and uh we we did uh do small quick tips and things like that uh talk about what's new business central and we then after that we start having people on we've yeah, been it's, we've been it's, doing it since it's, it's, it's fun. awesome it's fun. so they so cool. David, if you would, could you take a moment to let everybody that may not know of you, or even those that, that do know of you, to have a refresher a little bit about yourself? Yeah, thanks. Um, David Gersten. I am currently um, the senior manager for the Emerging Partner Ecosystems at a company, an ISV called Paceband. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a while. But my, my history is... Um, 
about 14 years ago, I was selling cell phones um, for Sprint because I was out of work for many, many years and took that job and door knocked on a company called Apex Computer Systems. And they actually have a Navision practice about 18, 20 people. And then they had like 250 field service reps that went out and fixed Dell computers. Um, and I was selling, trying to get them on to, from Verizon to Sprint and selling them $40 a month lines. And the Dennis Chu, uh, who's now uh, TSP over at uh, Microsoft, um, was the director there. And he ran the IT and the NAV practice and said, man, you, you need to be doing something different than selling $40 a month phone lines. Signed my contract um, and then hired me on to run his uh, Navision practice in sales and marketing. And at that point, I had no idea even what Navision was. I had no idea what an ERP was. Um, and it was a fantastic switch. But um, previously to that, I was selling, you know, big, huge contracts for Xerox to, you know, entertainment studios, J. Paul Getty, you know, big, huge contracts. So selling a $40 a month cell phone was absolutely not what I wanted to do. I wanted to sell million dollar NAV projects um, and uh, <laughs> learned ERP and, and immediately realized you had to be connected to Microsoft and got involved in IAMCP and and just kept on going and, and basically went through uh, 12 years of working at VARS, um, GP and NAV primarily, uh, launched a couple of very large successful business central practices during the Project Madera days. I, I literally signed the paperwork and then asked for forgiveness later to the owner of the practice and said, we're going to Chicago and we're going to go learn about this thing called Project Madera. And uh, Wow. All Project these Madera. names that come back in the flashbacks that people yeah. won't even remember. Yeah, he no, had no, attained it, Microsoft Business Solutions, Navision, Dynamics Nav. Yeah. It was crazy. I mean, I had no idea. And we were a GP practice and became partner of the year. Um, the year after I left, I grew a very large practice in BC. Um, it was fun doing it because we saw a lot of the NAV partners struggling uh, because it was, they were thinking it was supposed to be NAV and it was business central. And it, like they wanted it to be NAV, and, but it wasn't. And it was so different. And for us, it was just another solution to sell. Like we had no barriers in our mind. We knew it wasn't GP. We didn't know what NAV was, so we didn't know what it was missing. We just thought it was a cool solution. And we would sell it and sell it and sell it and implement it and created a very large, successful practice. That's, uh, we're still that, that's great. And then I decided I didn't want to be a partner. <laughs> <laughs> Move to the ISV side. Um, and uh, I've been doing that for the last couple of years. No, that's it's it's a great ecosystem for customers, partners, as well as ISVs to have solutions for the application. It, I look back on it. I'm, I'm interested in talking more about uh, your, your current position and what you, your ISV solution does for Business Central. There's several of them out there, uh, ISV solutions. And I'd like to talk with everybody about each of the ISV solutions to allow both partners and customers know what's available for maybe help them with their solution. But one interesting thing about Navision, just like Business Central, I wonder how many users, partners, or implementations actually get the full understanding of exactly what the application can do. And I don't mean that they're not using it properly. I mean that it does so much. Even when I first started working with it, that, applica that application had so many features and so much functionality and most of the implementations only just scratch the surface of their use of them. Even if you're working with a manufacturing company, you know, most of the ones that I've worked with, the application still does a lot more than what a lot of them are doing. So it goes back to just, you know, looking back at the history of it, of how feature rich it really is and how much more implementations can get out of it, but we can jump, yeah, jump no, over. No, I, if I could just touch on that real fast, it, it's, that's why this community is so amazing, Brad and Chris, is you see specific individuals out there. Um, and I don't want to, I don't want to insult anyone by not naming them specifically. So I won't name anyone, but there's so many great people in this community that really find the unique things about business central that nobody knows it does. And then they post, they do a podcast or they'll do a video or they'll do, you know, and you don't have to be an MVP to do this, 
But what's so cool is, and there's those little tidbits, and you were talking about kind of how you started this podcast about these tidbits. And I think that's one of the things that I, you know, I come from the sales and marketing side. I'm not a technical. I, I call myself a geek, you know, because I like the, the, the zeros and ones, but I don't want to program. I like the functionality. Like I like what it does. But at the end of the day, um, I don't think, I absolutely agree with you. People don't know. And it's kind of like Excel. You, you remember, I don't really know if you remember, but it, Microsoft was going to sell Excel at a lower price and pull out like 70% of its functionality. And they were going to call it like Excel Basic or something like that years ago it, it, because they realized that most people only use like 30% of the functionality of the solution. So they're like, okay, well, let's lower the price and give you a basic version of Word, Excel, and, and the Office Suite because most people don't even know what it does. Like ask how many people do, do pivot tables or do, you know, uh, you know, you know, um, power power formulas or whatever you know all the yeah, stuff it, it, the whole programming behind it with the macros and, and uh, just it was with the whole office suite it's, it's a i've had that conversation and equated that with business central with the office look and feel because of office is the same uh, yeah. suite you know if you take any of the products powerpoint outlook uh, word excel uh, even geez, if you went back to remember the days of uh, access, you know, all of the features and functionality that you had, it's, it's most implementations and most users only scratch on the surface. Yeah. But to, to jump back, let's talk about your existing uh, yeah. solution that you work with now and what offering it has and exactly what it does for the business central community. Yeah. So thank you. Um, so I'm in with a company called Paystand. We've been around about 10 years. Um, we're pretty new to the Microsoft space. We actually launched right before Community Summit, um, but we're real excited. We're in the Business Central. Um, we literally just change how people behave when they're making payments, um, how they, how customer, how merchants and customers behave. Um, we change. <clears throat> we make the world a better place. I was actually talking to someone a couple of days ago. You know, I have two kids. I have a 17-year-old and 19-year-old that work very, very hard. One scoops ice cream for a living uh, and goes to school, and one stands in a the movie theater. But at the end of the day, they work really hard for their money. And then they take their ATM card, because they all have their own accounts, and they go into the gas station, and they use that ATM standing in the gas station. Ooh, and they, and they why? Pay, and they pay $3, or they pay 5 That is the worst. It's crazy. For a number of reasons. And I keep telling them, first of all, security. Yes, then, that's so, the first thing I think of. You know, and two, you, is the you, crazy fees that you're paying for that ATM withdrawal. And I'm, I keep telling them, Brad, I'm like, this is your money. You are paying for your own money. Why are you doing this? And this is what pay stand. Take that personal level at, at your own bank account and move it to your business now. So we've created a way that people can pay each other, a merchant collects from a customer for zero fees and zero cost. Wow. So no longer is the card cartel, you know, the credit cartel taking money and the merchant is either typically absorbing this or they're passing it through the consumer, the customer, and, and that's gone. And, and ACH fees are gone. So we've created a secure, using blockchain technology um, that allowed you to literally move money at no cost and get the money the same day. So there's no DSO, day sales outstanding. You you basically, you fund every day. Um, and it's total like cash application, bank reconciliation, user experience is amazing. Um, we promote it using a Carrick methodology you know, reward your your customers to use this this rail to to collect payments on and um, kind of hit them with a stick. Show them, oh, you're paying a huge amount of money to to use a credit card or or use ACH, and instead it's free or save one percent. Use our PayStand bank network, um, and and people just love using that. So you know. $18 trillion annually are still being used for paper checks. 
in the United States. The, wow, that's a the lot United of States. Money. The United States. I, I, there's so many questions I have. I was listening to what you were talking about, but to talk on that paper check. The United States is so far behind. I think the rest of the world went in with the, the whole credit payments. card processing and payment processing. Paper checks. I can't count how many checks I've used in the past year. And I've had somebody ask me, uh, tell me that I needed to present them a check. And I was like, I don't even know where my checkbook is. I, <laughs> I write probably one check every few years. I ended up having to go to the bank to get a bank check yep. because I don't have any more checks because but everything's done online. And that's your behavior, but it's it blows my eighteen trillion dollars. Yeah, that, trillion. That, that is a pretty interesting because a couple of weeks ago I had someone come out and service the wood pellet that I have, and I was like, okay, how do I pay you Venmo? You know, do I you know pay you a, a card? And they were like, uh, no check. I'm like, okay, I have to like give me like fifteen minutes. I got to go look for a checkbook to go to go do that, and so <laughs> it's crazy. Not only that. But I wouldn't even know how to write. I do yeah. so little writing now. I type all the time. It, it's it, it, it's just like a, to me. It's just an archaic form. Years ago it was great. I recall first after nine eleven when the whole Check Twenty One initiative came out, where that's when checks started. Where you could scan the checks for deposit, yeah. or, and basically what led to mobile you know, deposits today yeah. with being able to take photographs of checks and use those for processing. But you mentioned PayStan's been in existence for 10 years and you had transitioned into the business central space shortly before community summit this year. Yeah. So just yeah. before October, which was about, I think we're about six weeks at yeah. the time of this recording since the, um, the conference, yeah. where was PayStand available for the past 10 years so if it did, wasn't within uh, business central? Yeah, we've been a preferred select, um, solution in the NetSuite space um, for Ooh. about seven years. And then- <laughs> I'm Gen glad you've seen the light. Yeah, and Sage Intact <laughs> um, as well. So we've been in the mid-market space. We are launching in um, early 2024 finance. Um, we, we realize that that's a huge opportunity. Um, we're talking to some strategic partners. It's, it's funny, we talked about this this $18 trillion in paper checks being a US problem. We're talking to a global bar last week and they're like, okay, well, we want you to be part of our ISV population. Although we only talk to global partners and we're like, well, this isn't a global problem. Like, like <laughs> only the US, only North America has really, like this is gonna be years and years. It's gonna take decades before we eliminate this problem. And everyone is using like, you know, blockchain to move money and, and you know, bank to bank type of thing. But um, it's still $18 trillion of paper checks. That doesn't exist outside of the United States. No, it, just it the cash not. flow. It's, yeah, it's like you're missing out. Solution, you so know, I, I, solution I, that scans checks and puts them into your account and does cash app won't work outside of the United States. Like it doesn't matter. <laughs> so to, to dig more into what pay stand, you said that it's the equivalent of, you know, take going to the ATM and taking cash and paying a merchant and, and taking the banks out of it. I think you had mentioned, yeah. correct? How, how does, how does a merchant capture the payment from their consumer? Yeah. So, so is there something they install set up? So, so we our um, extension goes into business central and we basically have an invoice created that has a pay link and that pay link goes out to the pay stand portal, um, which surfaces three options or up to three, if you want to, you can only surface our option if that's the only option you want to do. Um, but we can still, you know, where you're all in one, we'll do credit card, we'll do ACH and we'll do the pay stand bank network. We present it in such a manner that it's less attractive to use the other ones. It's more attractive to use ours. It's big, bold, colorful, you know, save money. Um, whereas, you know, you've got the big red logo and ooh, you want to use credit card, that's going to cost you a lot of money um, type of thing. We encourage our merchants to pass, to charge, to pass that charge through, you know, where they can. There's states that don't allow it and things like that. But um, even if they're absorbing that cost, then they don't want to pay it. So have them use the rail, um, use our pay, pay stand bank network. And, and when they do that, they log in just like their online banking. So literally it goes through, if you have multi-factor authentication, 
to your, you know, let's say you have a Bank of America account. We're ninety-seven percent of financial institutions are in our system, so we we have hooks too. So even you know, Des Moines, Iowa Farmers Credit Union, we're probably tied to it. Um, and uh, so the 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 merchant sends out the pay now the the invoice with the link. The mer customer clicks on the link, comes up, surfaces these things automatically is logged in because of unique tokenization. And then they basically log in to their bank um, with those credentials. Once they do that once, um, it's stored, protected. Again, um, blockchain security, it's very secure. Um, the, so if they're paying monthly, the same um, merchant uh, sends the invoice, they don't have to log in more than once, but they key in. And if it's like, oh, you know, you have a, what's your favorite food? You know, every bank has different types of multi-factor authentication and we pass that through. So Bank of America might say, what's your favorite food? You know, someone else might say, you know, what's the number we just texted you? All of that is surfaced just as if you're logging into your bank. You actually see your bank accounts and you choose which bank account you want to do. You know, you have funds and you click on it and you pay it. And it's gone. And then the merchant receives that money that night at three o'clock every day. We sweep all the deposits. We deposit it into the merchant's account and we run a deposit bank reconciliation ledger that comes down and they can see every single deposit, who the customer was and what invoice it was for. So not only do we cash up and mark the invoice paid, we also reconcile the bank and that's pretty unique. There's a lot of people that take credit card payments and bring it in, but we take it to that next level. If credit cards, ACH and our network will bring it in. To cash so out. the extension that you have is, works within Business Central. When somebody, when a user of the extension generates an invoice, it sends an electronic invoice to a customer on behalf of a merchant. So a merchant may be using the application or a business doesn't necessarily have to be a merchant yeah. um, in yeah. retail sales. It will have a link back. I did read an interesting, I forget the number, but I did read statistics on if you make it easy and you provide links for individuals to pay with your electronic invoices, the number of days to pay is decreased and yeah, they, they will often pay the day that it even on a net 15 or a net 30 they'll often just pay because it, they they got the link and they just pay it like you know i yeah, you had the I cash my little link from my gardener yesterday in my text and i clicked on it i had 30 days to pay it but i clicked on it because i didn't want to lose that link no, I, I did read that chris gpt maybe you can help me find the statistic but it was a fascinating here we go again with that word. It was a fascinating or interesting statistic on how how the cash, uh, you know, how the payment and late payment is now decreased with the opportunity to allow for online banking, or excuse me, online payment. Customers so that use our solution speed up time. Um, we have a sixty-two percent decrease of DSO. This wow. that's that's significant. See, that's interesting. Yeah. That see yeah. that right there. It just shows that, you know, this whole check and all this other processing and the delay. Now, some people may want to play the float for the cash, you know, with the payment, you know, just try to hold on to it longer because even more so now with, uh, with interest rates and such. But that uh, alone is a bit of a benefit for the user. Now, so a user receives the invoice or, or a customer receives the invoice to click the link and then they can choose how they want to pay from their bank account, credit card, ACH, uh, and then you will collect the funds from their source and then deposit it into a, um, you know, we'll use the word merchant, into somebody who's using the ISA or a merchant using this into their bank account and then also reconcile the invoices, yeah. uh, mark them as, uh, note the payments for the customers as well as yeah. do the bank reconciliation. Yep. So they get paid as soon as they hit submit and that file, that payment, is um, submitted, it's marked paid, um, and then the receipt of the funds is daily. So that also helps with that DSO because even typically when someone pays with ACH or, or credit card, it can take anywhere from two to five days to settle that amount. Yep. So even though they're paying on their due date, you know, with the credit card, let's say it's net 30, they pay on day 30, the, 
merchant, the business doesn't even receive the funds till day 35. That's true. They, you know, now the, the customer doesn't get penalized for those five days, but the merchants lose in five days of that cash. So they're that's, really net 35 at that point. Yeah, that's true. Cause it, it would show up in business central, but in the, in the back end, you know, they don't have the funds yet. Right. So we fund daily. Like every day, because we verify that the funds are there. Remember, you, they're going into the account and they're clicking. They're choosing the account. Let's say you have three savings accounts or three check-ins account, and you owe a hundred thousand dollars on this invoice, but you only have ninety thousand dollars in your in, in your accounts. You can't choose those accounts. Like you can't just you. Our system won't allow you to make that payment. So you have to have the funds in the account because we're pull, those funds are happening today. Does pay stand so this this is for invoices direct to businesses or direct to consumers? Does this application does your extension work or have a point of sale? So we really are in the card not present space. Okay. Um, so that's a real differentiator for us. Um, there's some great ISVs out there that really do well with card present. If you need to swipe a card, you need to be at, at a cash register. Um, but we're working with certain customers right now uh, from the show, actually. We've got some great opportunities. One's a big entertainment company. They have these facilities that um, they do shows at. Um, and at those shows, they, they do ticket sales, though. And they do that, most of them, through pre-sale e-commerce or over-the-phone group sales. Um, so that's all invoice. So we're going to take that business. We're leaving the other solution in place for their point of sale. So when you're at their restaurant or you're at their gift shop at their facility, they're going to swipe their credit card and they're going to still use that other company to process those credit cards. Um, but we're going to take, you know, 60% of their business comes from ticket sales and, and, and significant savings because if we could get, you know, our, our goal is zero feed. We call it the journey to zero, you know? So the more people that the, are, the less people that are using credit cards is creating a bigger ROI for you, you know? And, and the way we charge is literally how much money are you going to pass through the rails? What's your revenue? And then you get a subscription or subscri and it's contract. So what's really great is for growing companies, you know, or seasonal companies that want, they got this predictable expense. It's the same con month. Doesn't matter how much they're, you know, if they if they increase out of that band that month, or they, you know, they have they grow as significantly over those twelve months of that contract. We're just gonna we're not right sizing them. We're not back charging them. We're just gonna write a new contract when they come because they've grown their business. But all that money they've saved because they're not paying the fees, or their customers aren't paying the fees. Because there's plenty of merchants that pass it through. But why would you want your customer to have to pay? Like, again, why do people pay for their own money? This is their own money. Like, yeah. You know, why are you paying? It's bad enough that we have mortgages that we have to pay for that, you know, most people can't, you know, can't just buy a house cash, you know, but, you know, you should be able to buy stuff without financing it because that's what you're doing. You're giving the card cartel this money. Financing your own cash. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is. It's, it, you're, you're paying to use your own cash if you're looking at it in a sense. Yeah. But uh, there's arguments that are that you're not paying to use your cash. You're paying to allow for a transaction, Correct. not using your cash. So the, yeah. the well, fee the... is to, you know, again, if I want to purchase something from Chris online, Chris can't take my cash or I could mail him the cash. I'd have to wait and get it back. So I'm paying That's the convenient. fee right. for somebody to fund Chris, right. the, the money until they get my funds from my bank or I don't have to, uh, right. you know, pay it right so now. We get rid of them and give you a rail that you could literally just pay him today. Oh, who's doing that? Remember that company called Venmo? I looked this up. $244 billion in 2022 transacted on Venmo. So we're already doing this B to B, B to C, or consumer to consumer. Let's call it C to C. We're already doing that. We're also doing it in B to C. You know, the guy hanging my Christmas lights, I am actually having some elves show up at my house tomorrow. They're going to be dressed up as elves and they're hanging my Christmas lights. 
They're like, pay me Venmo. I have to see pictures of that. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Is that, is that a service that they come out? Oh, yeah. That's they, pretty cool. See, it just, it just showed, like, we're going to have some yeah. elves come out and hang your Christmas lights. <laughs> so, but, but at the end of the day, they're like, oh, You do know it's before Thanksgiving at the time I of this know. recording, correct? I'm really frustrated. The whole neighborhood's already lit up, so <laughs> we have to. You're, that, have, you're that person. I might not turn them on, but, you know, we'll have them on. Um, it's bad enough I started seeing Christmas trees in the stores Labor yeah. Day this year, I believe. It was Right after Halloween, man. Well, it was Labor Day. I, I saw Christmas trees before Oh, Halloween. wow. I mean, they keep moving Christmas earlier and earlier and earlier to try to get those seasonal sales. Soon we'll just have Christmas year-round. So, hold on. I want to go back to this. So, PayPal we, is the way we used to move money, you know, between people. And what did they do? They they bought Venmo. They were smart. They bought Venmo. They paid eight hundred million dollars in twenty thirteen for it, and they made nine hundred and fifty nine hundred and thirty five million last year, just on Venmo. So wow. already ten years later, and every year since subsequently, they made. I mean, they're ten x their investment already, because people behave differently. Yes, they people that way. So. So Jeremy, our founder in 2013, right at the same time when PayPal happened to buy Venmo, you know, pretty ironic, he founded Paystand. You know, he's like, well, if Venmo can do this for consumers, to consumers, why can't someone else do it for businesses? And, you know, we basically created the B2B version of Venmo using the Paystand proprietary private bank network. 1% of all payments in the world, in, in North America, come through our network. And that's a lot of money. Wow. Well, there's a lot of electronic transactions in the United States. Yeah. A lot transact. Does it work just for... $5 billion process through us annually. That's, that's impressive. That is impressive. That's a, that's quite a bit. Yes, yeah, six hundred thousand uh, companies use our network. Impressive numbers, David. Can can it go consumer to consumer, or is it just strictly business to? I mean, what because B to B, B to C. We're embedded in an ERP. You okay. know, we do have a lot of customers. We actually have a lot of customers that just use our pay now, our pay link. You know, we're talking to some construction company. They use some really unique ERP system, and we have an API, so we could drop that that pay now link onto an invoice. So if you're invoicing out of anything, I mean QuickBooks Online, you could drop our pay now link onto it, and it you takes you to the pay to the payment portal. You don't get the bank reconciliation, you don't get the cash cash application, but you get to make it easy for your customers to pay. You know, so absolutely, we could solve a seat. Can you, like, you know, Brad, if you want to invoice Chris for, you know, mowing your lawn, you could send him a paid stand link to to collect that money. Chris, do we like to cut my grass? <laughs> do you even have a yard? No, you do have a yard. <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah, You're so, new place. That is a good question. It, it could be used that way. It's not. That's not our goal. That's not what the behavior we're trying to change. That that's being handled by someone else, kind of thing. But you know, when our churn rate is less than one percent, so we and then we see this adoption that happens immediately, and we help with. So we'll help with the merchant with marketing. Because you have to, this is trust in the behavior. That's, I was getting into that. It's, it sounds, and that's, I did when I was listening to what you're saying, I had some questions you talked about with the pass through to the bank. I know I would be a little apprehensive where if I click the link to pay now and it's, it told me, okay, log into your bank. We're passing through your bank credentials. You know, so now that you can log in as well as your secret question, all right, or your multi multi factor authentication uh, mechanism, you know, through another service. Personally, I would be apprehensive of something like that. We 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 talk about our SOC one. We talk about our PCI compliance. We talk about our security layers. Talk about blockchain. You know, so we do our best to do it. But yeah, there is a hesitance. I'd say above the mid market space. Um, you know, and that was kind of our hesitancy in the finance. But we realized that in finance, that we can come down market enough that we're not going to have. You know, we don't need a a 
billion dollar company to use our solution. They have other things to do. That's not where we're marketing. Uh, um, because you do have that trust factor. Like does the does the AP clerk that's paying that invoice have even have those credentials? You yeah. know, you yes. know where, where they could have the ACH credentials, they could have the bank and routing number. That's you know, that's more typical. They have a credit card number, they have the little three digit code on the back of the credit card. That's more, but do they really have the keys to the castle that that bank credentials? And our discussion is they might not, but we are looking at solutions to to emulate a login for a senior leader in the organization to somehow not have to come down to the desk, you know, do it because they could they could literally they don't have to write it on a post. No, we tell them don't do that, don't tell it over the phone, don't but come down, key it in once, once. That's all you have to do. Oh no, I was getting Chris. I was going to call Chris and tell him to give me his bank account information. <laughs> you just told him not to give it to me. You know, the login credentials. <laughs> so yes, the- yeah, it, it absolutely is nerve wracking. But I will tell you, when we present it, that they're going to save one percent if they use this payment methodology versus pay three percent by using a credit card. They're going to most likely use the one percent savings. Yeah, especially if you have if you have a lot of transactions. So, so just to so for me to understand the process is, is that they get an invoice and then you send the link, and the link is, uh, so the link's in the email. Okay, the link is in the email, and then they they click the link from their mobile device, and then they'll prompt them to log in and yeah. and uh, enter their bank account uh, login credentials, and then they can choose which account they want to pay from. Exactly. You also have a portal as well. Like if you were we to do send have a portal, so yeah. So so customers, uh, there's a lot of merchants that have customers with lots and lots of invoices. They want to go in, they look at a statement, they can choose which invoices they want to pay. Um, they could short pay if you allow it. Um, they could put notes. You know, there's a lot of that the typical pay your portal stuff. So yeah, they can go directly to the payer portal, select which invoices they want to pay, see their credits, see that, and then go through that payment experience as well. Um, so yeah, absolutely. It's tied to either the portal or um, an invoice. Oh, very good. Real so easy sounds- implementations. You know, we do the implementations for our customers. So we, we have a great referral partner network. Um, we're recruiting partners all the time. And, and, you know, there's marketing dollars, there's lunch and learns for their teams. Um, we have a portal to drop leads in real easily. We make it real easy to work with our partners. Um, eventually, maybe some partners want to get into a reseller model. You know, when I was a partner, I didn't want to resell ISVs. It was hard enough to stay current with the technology. I just wanted ISVs to not screw up my ERP deals. You know, and that's kind of, you know, my 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 thought. That's why I love my job, because I've sat on the ISVs. I've sat on the partner side as well. You know, uh, uh, I've made those decisions of which ISPs you want to work with. For a, a user of Business Central, uh, so I, again, the fees, there aren't any fees for the transaction processing. Mm-hmm. There is, if somebody's paying for this somewhere, so you, Paytech, Paytech has to yeah. make a pro, uh, Paystand, excuse me, Paystand has to make a profit, yeah. obviously. So we're, we're a software company that has a real kick ass solution at the end of the day, and we're making our money on on subscription as a service. So at the end of the day, how much revenue do you have as a company? We're gonna put you in a price. What features of the software are you using? Are you using our lockbox? Are you using you know different things? And we're gonna charge you a monthly fee. And that's gonna be a contract based on the present day revenue. So if you grow in the next 12 months, that's not changing. So it's a full-fledged payment solution. And you had mentioned you you do have merchant services for credit cards. You have ACH yeah, routing. And you... We're not a gateway, but we go ahead and we will offer credit card services. It's not very competitive. It, it's it's like your typical card not present rates, you know, if you're shopping, does, you know, which are high risk anyway. Card not present is a high risk mm-hmm. rate anyway. Um, but again, we don't care. We don't want you to use the credit card anyway. So we're going to give you that. Now, if you want to bring your own processor, we can do that also. 
we'll charge you a little bit more money um, because we have to surface that. We have to move money a little differently rather than using our services. Um, but we have plenty of customers that come off of, you know, they're using other um, payment processing companies. They're already, they have a, um, a VAR sheet that's already set up with those type of things. We'll, we'll bring them into our deal. Because again, we're not chasing, we're, that's what differentiates us from those other payment companies. They're chasing the basis points. They're making money, they, they want those, the, the interest, they want the fees because they, they're making money off of those. That's a significant amount of revenue at some of these other payment companies out there. Oh, transaction processing is wonderful. Yeah. Fees per <laughs> transaction. Listen, I'll take half a cent over, you know, how many billions of transactions go through a network in a given year. I'll Please, even take yeah. a quarter of a cent. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. It, at the end of the year, I'll still, you know, just be sitting here doing a podcast, though. <laughs> Yeah. But, uh, this is an interesting fact, and then we could go whichever direction we want to go. Paystand has saved our customers more money than we've collected in revenue. Wow. No, that's uh, for the decreasing the cost of processing is significant because any person, business that transacts is paying a fee somewhere. So if you can reduce the fees, that's the substantial savings. Almost the same as if you get everybody going remote, you don't have to pay for toilet paper anymore. And you can save a lot of money on toilet paper. Yeah, I used to work at Xerox and we talked about the paperless office. And I left Xerox in 94 and there's still no paperless office. Every single office has paper. You will never have a paperless office. Ah, that's another argument. I, I don't even understand why, but some, I think just habits and people are reluctant to change. Right. right. So that's what we're doing though, Brad. Here, that's our paradigm shift. Because again, we started this conversation. One of the reasons I came to Paystan, I'm so passionate about it is because we're changing human behavior. We're not just another payments company. We're little, we're saving the world. We're, we're, we're making people keep their money that they work so hard for and they can invest in their own company more. They could expand, they can create more jobs. They could reinvent, they could invest in technology. They, we actually pay the savings that we create in companies pay for ERP implementations. Oh, think about okay. it. I mean, if you're going to yeah. save a customer $200,000, you're presenting a business central deal. Let's say it's an 80, 100, $150,000 business central deal. And they're a $100 million company. They're spending $300,000 a year on, pay, on on processing fees, right? If they're only going to pay me 60000 a year, whatever that number is. No, I, I understand. It's, you it's, know, I you know, like this though. You said you're saving the world. See, I'm coming with a slogan for you. You know, pay stand, saving the world one click at a time. Well, yeah. one penny at a time. See, you can come up with all these catchphrases. I like this. <laughs> one we payment play this at a time. <laughs> one pay link, click at a, yeah. <laughs> pay stand, one click at a time. You know, you, you get to, no, it, it sounds, it, it sounds like a great product, a great offering. And, if anything that reduces fees for a business is, is beneficial and also offers the convenience for their customers to pay, that's what it comes down to is it's humans take the path of least resistance yeah. period It's human nature. You know, nobody goes out of their way and say, I want to choose the most difficult route possible. They're more likely to take the easiest route that they need to do what they need to do. So if you can make it easier for them to pay and not have to pay, more for what they're doing uh, that's uh, a significant savings this is uh, you, great I, I this is i'm glad that we had the opportunity to speak about this because you know, with paste and being new to the business central space it's nice to get an explanation of exactly what it is yeah. and understand how it works and what it can do for a bc implementation you guys are the only one doing this right now i i mean all of us have been in in this space for quite some time in the dynamics um, you know, there, there's always like, uh, 
we need more options. And I think for, for years, there's really not a lot of options of like payments um, within Business Central or within NAV. And so seeing, you know, PaySend come around, it, it's not just any payment processor. I mean, you guys are doing entirely something different than I've seen uh, in this space. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that, again, is why I made this decision to join here is, again, changing human behavior, we're adding a whole new option. Like, it, again, Chris, we're not a payments company. You know, we're, we're a software company that changes human behavior. Um, we're decentralized financials. Like, we're, we don't want to be tied to the bank and credit card culture. Um, and that's not what's driving our, our decisions and, and the deals we're making with our customers. So, you know, those are all being made because of, you know, we're, we're trying to save them money. We're trying to make it easier for them. Like Brad, you said, customer experience. We're giving them a much better experience of making those payments. Um, so that alone, yes, absolutely. We do that hundred percent uniquely. No one else does it. Um, to the level of offering all three. Um, and then the flip side is we're also the only ones that take the full bank deposit and go all the way through to bank deposit. Um, if, if you look at the other payment companies that do ACH and, 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 and credit cards, um, they stop at cash application. They really don't take that last deposit from the bank because again, we can do it because we're hooked to the banks. So the merchant that's using Bank of America or Wells Fargo as their corporate banking, we're tied to that already. So we're going to bring that money in. We're going to bring that deposit in. Like, that's why it's so easy. We're already hooked to you. Like we no, have I like the convenience. And also the reconciliation saves time oh, yeah. from the employee point of view. Oh, yeah. So I have that one. Um, let me pull that. Give me two seconds because that's the hour saved. Um, on a typical customer that's doing about $50 million a year in processing, um, we see about a $90,000 annual labor savings. Wow, that's um, a full I, person. I that's a full-time employee. <laughs> yeah. So not only do you get to save on your transaction processing fees, you also get to save on your employee fees. So what we find is that the broken financial business infrastructure, and I'll, I'll end with this and see where you got these $18 trillion in paper checks. You've got a manual error prone, tedious process, which is ultimately Goldman, Goldman Sachs is putting this at about a $550 billion in lost profit. Just those two things. The errors in the manual prone process and the $18 trillion in checks is a $550 billion in lost profit. See, Chris, this wow. is our next thing. I love we, stats. We, I like statistics too. I and now I realize it. is we need to go on a venture and figure out how to eliminate checks. We should start a campaign, eliminate <laughs> checks. You know how you eliminate checks? You have people use the pay stand bank network to pay you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you man. start charging people to use checks. Get businesses to start. You have to get them to, to start checks. changing it. And it's <laughs> like, hey, I'm not going to use checks if I'm going to get extra well, fees. Grocery stores <laughs> finally stopped accepting checks. You know? Oh yeah, they've been doing that for so long. I, I, I we used to. I used to get like rashes when I stood behind someone and they were like pulling yeah. their checks. Out. <laughs> <laughs> How much is that? Like writing a check at a at Albertsons or the, you know, the local Trader Joe's. I'm like, no. no. I barely carry cash, so you know, you, the check. We'll. I don't. Like I said, I don't even know where they are. If I even have any, I think I shredded them all, thinking I would never need them. Yeah. And cash, on the other hand, too, it's like I get stuck sometimes. I want to. I would like to buy a candy bar or something. And you find someone who, for whatever reason, they can't take the cashless payment. And it's like almost having like, you know, you have a hundred dollars and you need a dollar and you can't break it. Yeah. You know, I, it's uh, like you can't, you're stuck and you're like, I can buy a candy bar, but I can't. I have $3 in my wallet right now. Like three singles. Like that's all I've got. I don't have cash. And it's interesting. I live in Idaho now, thus the winter coding. Um, <laughs> you know, the people are talking a lot about like cash is king. Like as a consumer, people don't want you to use credit cards. 
you know, even in, in consumers. So they're like, no, you got to use cash, support businesses that there's actually businesses in Idaho. I mean, it's a very conservative state that don't want their cash only, literally. Like you cannot use a credit card in there. Um, where I came from in California, ironically, it's totally opposite. There's cashless stores showing up all the place. You can't, they won't even take cash. So it's a difference in, in mentality. In Idaho, they're like, I don't want people to know. Every time you swipe a credit card with the data that they're collecting about you as a consumer, I, I, you know, down to like, if you think about, we don't want to go full political, but if you think about NRA and you know, gun laws and stuff. They they literally are looking at the SKUs that you're buying on your, like what type of ammunition are you, you're not just buying ammunition for your gun, but what type of ammunition do you have? Are you buying? And then they can go back and go, well, do you own that gun? Is it licensed? Is it like, like this is the, the scare tactics that people are doing in that whole thing. And, and it goes back to, again, we started this talking about people's behavior changing. You know, and it's real interesting how quickly I'm I'm willing to like send you thirty dollars over Venmo for dinner last night, though. Yeah, yeah that's why yeah. I tied into. Remember when Venmo? You could see the descriptions. I wrote a little thing to read through their API. You could read the descriptions what people put. I think it's funny because even if funny. I transact with somebody, <laughs> I don't use Venmo. I use some of the other services, and I always put a silly comment. And yeah. the the ones I use, they now are smart enough to tell you that you can't use that description because it's not appropriate so <laughs> no. now i have to get creative with my spelling and creative with my word choice you know, about last night thanks for last you know things like that anymore <laughs> yeah so i guess uh, i get some people because read it, that it's hilarious well it's not only that you see it it shows up on their bank statement yeah. or something or somebody sees it if their significant other reads it and i'm like oh that was for you know the good time at the bar with the you know uh, drugs, alcohol, and, you know, music. It, it's just to, just to be fun. No, it's funny because you sit there and you read all these things and you're like, wow, people pay for the weirdest things on these services. But... <laughs> yeah, I, I think yes. uh, it, it is good. But, David, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us about Paste and and how Paste and is changing the behavior. And it's, as you had called it, the similar to the Venmo service for B2B. Uh, if you would, could you tell us how someone could learn more information about Paste and, and uh, find a little bit more about the offering and what it can do for their business? Absolutely. So uh, we've got a, a link, uh, paystand.com, very easy. There's an integrations page um, that lists the business central information right there. You can uh, submit for a lead. You, if you're a partner, you can go to the partner page on the website. Um, refer a lead or uh, sign up to be a partner. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn. I love social media. I'm on Twitter, DS Gersten. Um, LinkedIn is David Gersten. And then, uh, you know, D Gersten at paystand.com. Um, I love, you know, I used to call them COVID check ins, these type of, you know, 15 minute, 20 minute calls um, during the day. Um, I love having those. Um, you know, I'll be at Directions. Uh, we just signed a gold booth at uh, Directions. So we're, we're double downing. I mean, we're, this is not a, a small play for us. Um, and uh, we're real excited to be part of the community. So, um, you know, usually Great. We, we'll put the pay stand LinkedIn and Twitter and the email as well in the show notes so individuals can get in contact with you. And we look forward to seeing you at Directions yeah. to learn a little bit more about pay stand and uh, about the logo that you're going to put on there for the podcast for every install for the year of 2024. Absolutely. No, I, Brad and Chris, thank you so much. And I, I just love your program and this has been fun. You know, we hit all the good parts. We talked about coffee. We talked about my, my, you know, my winter coat. We talked about weird big paid payment behavior, you know, all that. And, no, we'll have to have a follow up it. maybe in the spring to see the spring coat and also exactly. to, uh, talk about anything else that is going on with the, you know, I'll, I'll put it in the payment processing arena Absolutely. for uh, pay stand and, you know, more statistics. On, I love statistics. I'm like Chris. Yep. So we can love see it. more about how behaviors have changed. Uh, but thank you again for your time. We really do appreciate it. And we look forward to talking again with you soon. Thank you. Take so care, David. All right. All right. Take care. Ciao, ciao. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, Chris. 
for your time for another episode of In the Dynamics Corner Chair. And thank you to our guests for participating. Thank you, Brad, for your time. It is a wonderful episode of Dynamics Corner Chair. I would also like to thank our guests for jo- joining us. Thank you for all of our listeners tuning in as well. You can find Brad at developerlife.com. That is D-V-L-P-R-L-I-F-E.com. And you can interact with them via Twitter, D-V-L-P-R-L-I-F-E. You can also find me at matalino.io, M-A-T-A-L-I-N-O dot I-O. And my Twitter handle is matalino 16 And see, you can see those links down below in their show notes. Again, thank you, everyone. Thank you and take care.